Okay. So for the solid elements, okay. So we can take the derivative of, uh, of the displacement functions. Then we can get the uh, the normal strain epsilon x, and uh, we know the u functions, we define the u functions at the master element. So the u functions, uh, it is the functions of the Cxi eta and the zeta. So the okay, so remember for the three dimensional problems uh, not only for the real element we need to use the x, y, and the z coordinates. For the mass element, also we need three coordinates. And uh, they are named by the Greek letters, the Cxi, eta, and the zeta. So if the u functions, which is defined by these three, uh, these three parameters, how can we take a partial derivative? We need to use the chain rule. So this one is equal to the So we need to separate it into three, three terms. We need to multiply partial u to partial C, multiply by the partial C to partial x. And uh, uh, for, for these three terms, we can find them in the inverse of the Jacobi matrix. So this term. Okay, so for these three terms, we can replace them by the uh, elements in the inverse Jacobi matrix. And uh, uh, the other three terms, we need to calculate them from the, uh, the, this formula. Since the u is equal to summation ui times phi i, and the, uh, the ui, they are the uh, assumed nodal displacements. Phi i, they, they are the uh, uh, derived uh, shape functions. The shape functions, uh, they are used to do the interpolations. So we can multiply the uh, shape functions by the corresponding nodal displacements to establish a continuous displacement functions. So that's the U functions. If we like to calculate the partial U to partial C, then we need to take partial derivatives to summations of, the, of this one. And uh, uh, we can take par partial derivative for each term, then sum up. It, will, it is the same as the if we take partial derivative uh, to the summations of this one. So uh, it is equal to okay. So we can take partial derivative. If we like to calculate the uh, uh, partial u to partial C, it will be the uh, summations we take if we take this one. And uh, this term, it will be the. Okay, when we calculate this term, 
uh, again, we need to use the, uh, the chain rule. Uh, since the UI, uh, they are not functions of the cosine eta and the zeta. So only the phi i functions, we need to take partial derivatives. And also, since we know all the, we know all the phi i functions, then uh, we can calculate the uh, partial cosine to partial phi i. Okay, so the, uh, if we like to know the, remember the B times U the B matrix multiplied by the U vector can give you the uh, epsilon vector and uh, usually we will put the epsilon X uh, for the first term in the epsilon vector and uh, uh, however you are free to arrange the sequence but uh, uh, you don't need to figure out uh, some very strange uh, sequence. Usually, you just follow the 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 common uh, the the common rule. It will be uh, easier for you <coughs> for your uh, derivation to be under understood by others. So, I will suggest you just follow the common rule to do all, everything. So the epsilon vector, the first since the first term in the epsilon vector, which is the epsilon x, and uh, that's why I said the the first row of the B matrix, since the first row of the B matrix multiplied by the U vector, can give you the first element in the uh, in the string vector, and uh, if we know the this term. Then what is the B11? Okay, so that's the B11, and the B12 will be equal to zero. B13 is equal to zero. Since the B11 will be multiplied by the U1, and the B12 will be multiplied by the V1, and the B13 will be multiplied by the W1, and the uh, That's the, f the first three uh, elements in the U vector. So the first row multiplied by the U vector can give you the epsilon. So that's the, uh, only the B11, the first element in the uh, first row of the B matrix. Okay, so uh, follow the similar uh, derivations, you can get uh, all the elements in the B matrix. And uh, also, that's, uh, that's what you need to know uh, if, if you like to prepare for the final exam or something. Okay, so uh, take a picture and then I will continue. Okay, uh, I think I will give the homework uh, in this hour. So the Fourth row of the the epsilon x 
epsilon y, epsilon z. Assume that's the, the six elements in the string vectors. So the fourth row will be, uh, if, we, if we multiply the fourth row of the B matrix by the U displacement, uh, by the U displacement vector, it can give you the gamma xy, the shear strain uh, lie on the xy plane. Okay, so try to derive the fourth row uh, try to derive the fourth row of the B matrix. Okay, so that's the homework uh, you need to finish. Uh, also, uh, after you finish the homework, send it to the Yahoo email, then, uh, then I can get it. Okay, take a picture. Okay, after we get the B matrix, then we can multiply the B matrix by the U vector. Then we can get the strings inside the, the master element. And remember, the next step, we will like to calculate the The next step, we need to calculate the strain energy of this element. And uh, uh, we calculate the strain energy since the strain energy is part of the uh, potential energy. And uh, we need to use the, the, the minimum of the total potential energy theory. And uh, when we calculate the, the minimum value of the total potential energy theory, uh, of the total potential uh, energy, then we can get uh, the, best, the, the best approximation for the, uh, for the solution. The, this rule is the, uh, this theory, which is a, uh, a replacement for the equilibrium equations. So that's why we need to calculate the, uh, the, the minimum total potential energy. And also, that's why we need to calculate the strain energy. The general uh, theory, when we calculate the strain energy, we need to multiply the strain by the stress. And uh, uh, all the terms, they must be uh, in the energy couple. When we arrange the sequence of the strains and the strains, remember you need to follow the rule. All, uh, all elements in the epsilon and the sigma, they must be the energy couple. So the epsilon x Since only the sigma x multiply to the epsilon x. Okay, since the only the normal strains along the same direction uh, of the strains, you need to multiply these two together. These two, they are uh, a pair of the energy couple. And the epsilon y will be the sigma y. So you need to uh, have the idea. So uh, if we say the first element in the epsilon vector, uh, it is the epsilon x, then the first element in the sigma vector, it must be the sigma x. Okay, so the, the, same, uh, the same concept for the energy couple. Also, we need to apply this concept to the u and the 
vector. Okay. Remember the elements in the displacement vector and uh, the load vector, they are also need to be uh, the energy couple. So if the first element, which is the U1, okay, if the first element in the displacement vector, which is the uh, nodal displacement uh, of the node 1, uh, if we use the symbol U1, it represents the uh, displacement along the x direction for the node 1. Okay, so if the first element in the u vector, which is the u1, then the first element in the p vector, it must be the, uh, the concentrated load applied to the node 1 along the x direction. Okay, so if we multiply these two together, uh, we then it means that we multiply the load and the displacement along the same directions. Okay, so these two, they are also a pair of the energy couples. And the, the sequence of the U vector and the P vector, uh, all elements, they must be the energy couple. You cannot change the sequence. If you use the U1 as the first element, then if, we, if, if you see the, the first element, which is the P2Y, okay, then it must be wrong. Since the, the U1 represents the displacement for the node 1 along the x direction, the P2Y means the, the load applied to node 2, and the, uh, the, y, the second subscript, the Y represents the load which is along the Y direction. And you cannot multiply the load to some other points and also uh, the displacement and the applied loading they are not along the same directions so it, when you calculate the, the work done by the force uh, done by this force it cannot be these two so the uh, not only the epsilon and the sigma they should be the energy couple also when you consider the u displacement and the, the p vector they are also should be the energy couple okay okay so uh, that's the okay i will erase this part okay so uh, we need to calculate the epsilon and the, uh, and the, the sigma. For different elements, we have the considered the strains and the stress. Uh, for the previous three elements, uh, only part of the strains and the stress we need to consider. But uh, for the three-dimensional solid element, uh, actually, the, we do not have any uh, any special character for the geometric shapes. Also, we do not have any special uh, consideration for the applied loadings. So for a structure like this one, we need to consider all the, uh, all the possible strains and the strains. So the, the strains used for the solid element, it includes all the three normal strains and all the three uh, shear strains. And uh, uh, the combination for the combination of these six strains for for a small element, totally, how many strains we need to consider for a, for a cubic uh, for a, a three dimensional cube, cube? Okay. Remember, for the solid element, we have six phase, and. Uh, uh, for this six phase, uh, there are three possible. Uh, if we consider the the stress, the force uh, on the surface, and uh, for three dimensional structure, there are uh, six surfaces, and uh, for each surface, there are three 
uh, three directions. Since uh, if we need to describe all the possible shades on a surface, then we need a three-dimensional uh, components to describe the shades. So for each surface, there are three uh, directions of the shades. So totally, it will be uh, 18. The three times six. So totally, it is the uh, 18 strays on the uh, on this small element. But uh, for these 18 strays, there are only six independent, only six independent uh, strays. Since the uh, we know the sigma x for the positive x surface along the positive x direction. It must be equal to the uh, negative x surface along the uh, opposite direction. Since we need to keep the equilibrium along the x direction, so the sigma xx will be equal to the sigma uh, negative x negative x. Okay, so that's the. Uh, there are three pairs of the normal strays, and also for the shear strays, uh, if we like to keep. Uh, the, the, the this in the uh, the if we like to keep the equilibrium, it must be two two couples in opposite directions. So for the shear stress, whenever we say tau x y, it will always have four uh, four stress uh, applied on four different surfaces. They are in same magnitude. So for each shear stress. Uh, it represents uh, four strays on uh, on four different surfaces. Okay, so the the three shear strays represent twelve elements on this small element, and uh, the three normal strays represent six. So twelve plus six will be equal to the eighteen. So that's the uh, that's why we say for three. Three-dimensional uh, solid structure. We need to consider uh, six strains, and also we need to consider uh, six strains. Okay. Then how do we calculate the, uh, this one in the volume? Uh, again, the uh, the audio, the volume occupied in the real element, they are obtained from the uh, inverse geometric mapping from the mass element back to the real element. Okay, so uh, if you like to say how do we define the uh, the volume for the element I? Okay, uh, the I represent uh, it is a typical element. The typical element it is just uh, one of all the elements. Okay, uh, we just discuss the. Uh, the particular element uh, for the element i. Okay, so the element i, so I need to add the vi. That, uh, the strain energy uh, obtained for, for this particular element. Okay, so that's the volume. And uh, how do we calculate the volume? Then we can use the Okay, so that's the the terms we need to calculate. And uh, uh, remember, for the plane problems, the Jacobian represents the area ratio. The area ratio is calculated by the uh, inverse uh, mapped uh, element in the real element divided by the uh, the area the the corresponding area in the mass element. If we div divide the area of the uh, of the corresponding uh, uh, for the for the corresponding part in the real element by the corresponding part in the mass element. 
the ratio is the Jacobian. Then what is the Jacobian for three-dimensional problems? Also, you can calculate the if if we like to calculate the volume defined by three vectors. If we have the d c equal to one, d eta equal to zero, d zeta equal to zero. Okay, which is a unit. Uh, vector along the C direction. This is the first vector. Also, we have the second vector. And also, we have the third vector. Okay, so 1, 0, 0, and uh, 0, 1, 0, and uh, 0, 0, 1. For these three, they represent three unit vector in the, uh, in the mass element. If we know three vectors, how do we calculate the uh, the defined volume for these three vectors. You can calculate the if this one is the V1 vector, that's the V2 vector, that's the V3 vector. The volume defined by these three vector If we have three vector, then we need we can calculate the v one dot okay. You can calculate the volume by either either one of these three, and uh, that's the scalar triple product. So if we have three vectors, if we like to uh, calculate the corresponding volume defined by these three vectors, we can calculate this uh, by either one. We we can calculate the volume. That's the scalar triple product, and uh, it is very easy to. Uh, to check for these three vector, the corresponding volume in the mass element, the uh, the volume should be equal to one. Okay, and the the three vectors in the real element, the one zero zero, uh, if we replace the uh, these three into the uh, Okay, if we know the vector in the uh, mass element, then we can multiply it by the Jacobi matrix. Then we can find uh, the corresponding vector in the real element. Okay, so we can replace these three vectors into this formula. Then we can get three different vectors in the real element. And uh, also we can calculate the corresponding volume for defined by these three vectors. The three vectors, they are obtained by the inverse geometric mapping by this formula. And after we get the, the three corresponding vectors in the real element, then we can use the similar uh, formula to calculate the corresponding volume. And also we can calculate the volume ratio between these two. And uh, uh, after you finish the, all these calculations, uh, you will find that the volume ratio is the determinant of the Jacobi matrix. And uh, the, so remember the determinant of the Jacobi matrix, uh, which is also named as the Jacobian. The Jacobian represents the volume ratio between these two uh, x, y, z, uh, sorry, x, y, z, and uh, the cos and the zeta for these two volumes.
Okay, so the Jacobian multiplied by the d cos c d eta and the and the d zeta, which is the d volume in the real element, and the, in the mass element, all the cos c eta and the zeta, they are always changed from the negative one to positive one. So it means that we need to integrate these three, uh, therefore these three parameters uh, from negative one to positive one. And uh, uh, we know the epsilon is equal to b times u, so the epsilon transpose uh, will be equal to the u transpose times b transpose. And uh, the sigma is equal to the d times epsilon. So uh, d times b times u, which is the epsilon. Okay, so that's the formula. We can calculate the strategy for this element. And again, we can move the vector, which is not functions of the cos eta and the zeta. The one half, which is a constant, and uh, this constant will never be changed, uh, no matter which point we consider. Uh, inside the master element. So it means that we can move the one half to the outside of the integrations. Also the U transpose vector, the nodal displacement, they are assumed for, uh, for all the related nodal points, but uh, the U transpose, uh, they are not related to the cos eta and the zeta. So it means no matter which point you consider in the mass element, the, uh, the nodal displacements, they are always the same. So uh, they will not be changed for different points considered in the, uh, in the element. So uh, take a picture, then I will erase the, the bottom half. Okay, so we can move the things to the outside. So it means we, we can move the one half u transpose uh, to the outside. Also, we can move the u vector to the outside. And uh, uh, the results of these integrations, it will be the K matrix. Okay, so the results of these integrations represent the, the element Stevens matrix uh, for this element. Okay, and uh, uh, we will use the numerical integrations uh, to calculate the, uh, we, we, we will use the numerical integrations to calculate the, uh, the K matrix. And the, the numerical integrations, uh, usually we will use the, the Gaussian quadrature. So uh, the, that's the numerical integrations. And uh, remember, the, uh, when we consider the triple integrations, uh, we will calculate the, the inside integrations first. When we consider the integrations, the integration variable, which is the cos c, the outside integration variable, the uh, eta and the zeta, they will be taken as a constant. So uh, when we calculate the inside integrations, the the the, the only variable which will be uh, will be varied, which is the cos variable. Okay, and uh, for the eta and the zeta, 
they will be constant. Okay, so the inside integrations will be changed to the numerical integrations first. So we have the For this one, they are the cosy i. Okay, most of the, most of, most time we will use the same number, the m, for all the th for all these three directions, and the the, the most common uh, values of the uh, integration points used will be the two point. So the uh, if if we use the two point in the Gaussian quadrature, the uh, the coordinates they are the negative square root of one third, and the, the positive square root of one third, and the, the two uh, weights will be the one and the one. Okay, so uh, the cosi i will be the first variable. Uh, they are the two values. And the, the eta and the zeta. Okay, so if we uh, if we use uh, the m equal to the two, then totally we have eight integration points, and uh, we uh, you need to combine all the possible uh, eight uh, the 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 coordinate change for these eight points, and all the weights they are equal to one. They are equal to one. So uh, for these calculations, they represent the integrations for this one. Okay, okay, I will take a break here.